What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. This optimization guide is going to be a little bit different to the usual. We're going to be going through a ton of different mods for Fallout 4. These will take your game from performing pretty well to super well, and of course, improving stability and things like that as well. Now, just a quick note, the next update scheduled for the next few days is going to completely break pretty much all Fallout mods, as it affects most of the backbone mods like F4SE, which is pretty much a requirement for all mods. But this isn't the end of the world. Obviously, mods will be updated, and if they're not, other ones will take their place, but you can still mod the game now and enjoy it in its current state without having to worry too much about it, as you can pause all updates for the game or even pause updates completely. It won't update until you uncheck one simple tick box. If you don't already know how to pause updates for games on Steam, you'll find a link in the description down below for a guide on how to do so. Also, while you're down there, if you haven't already got a Fallout 4 mod manager, like Vortex for example, then you'll need to follow the mod manager installation guide as that's a little bit in depth. It runs through getting Fallout 4 ready to a moddable state where we can install different mods as we set up F4SE and of course a mod manager to sort out load order and things like that. All right, now that we've gone through pretty much everything, let's go ahead and open up the mod loader and find out what else we can install to get the game working really well. Okay, so in Vortex over here, I've got nothing crazy. On the mod section, you can see I've just got the loading times fix, which we'll be installing as pretty much the first mod here. But we've also got on the dashboard, Fallout 4 script extender, which is pretty much a requirement for all of the mods here. First of all, starting at the very top, the long loading times fix. I'd recommend this mod to practically everyone. It improves load times, especially through elevators, when you're revisiting visited locations, etc. It does a ton of optimization behind the scenes, and of course will take your loading times from 20-30 seconds down to just 5 or 6. This is especially welcome for those gaming on hard drives and not necessarily SSDs, for example. In order to go ahead and install it, simply click the Vortex button at the very top and click a download over here, as the only requirement is F4SE, which we've already got done. So I'll click Fast Download, and of course, because it's already set up, it prompts me that it already exists. Now that our loading times are improved as we're modding the game, achievements are probably going to be disabled somewhere along the line, if not at the gate. This is what the next mod, called simply Achievements, is out here to fix. Once you install this, the ability to earn different achievements in the game is pretty much re-enabled. Once again, click the Vortex button, and as we already have F4SE, choose Download and Slow Download. When it's installed, it'll pop up here, and there we go. Now, achievements are re-enabled. Next up, the High FPS Physics Fix. This mod may sound a bit confusing to those who aren't used to playing Fallout 4, but essentially, scrolling down, this mod unties the game speed from the frame rate. This mod fixes that entirely, so you can crank your FPS way through the roof and you'll get a smooth, reliable gameplay experience pretty much whether you're getting 10 or 300 frames. To install this, once again, choose Vortex and slow download. Once it's done, it pops up here as well. You can scroll down further to see exactly what this mod does and here's all of the features listed out here as well as unlocking the FPS, which is huge and especially important as we're installing a ton of different performance mods. Then, some people, but most likely not everyone, suffer from sprint stuttering. This simple mod over here, the sprint stuttering fix, fixes exactly what you expect. This fixes the twitching and stuttering when sprinting in first person. Obviously, you can just scroll down, go to third person, and you don't necessarily need this mod, but as someone who likes to play first person, I definitely recommend installing this. Once again, there's no other requirements, just install it and it pops up. Then the far mod, which is the far away area reform mod, which essentially changes the way that things load in the distance. So here's the before and here's the after. Quickly flicking between them, you can see the changes here. It adds a ton more detail to the game and it doesn't necessarily cost much FPS at all. I definitely recommend this mod as it makes the world feel just a little bit more alive, even though it's dead. Anyways, you can also see down here that it optimizes and improves over 6,000 distant land textures, which means better performance, less stutter, and from the screenshot over here, things look a little bit better even. It doesn't seem so flat and blurry. Obviously, this may be a personal taste thing. This may change a bit too much for you if you're used to how the game looks in one way compared to another, but for me, I'll definitely be taking the improvement in performance and, in this case, an improvement in how land looks in different areas. So once again, Vortex, slow download him, that's it. This is the biggest mod yet, sitting at around 500 megabytes, so if you're not paying for the paid plan, this is going to take a couple of minutes to finish. Then, as we're playing around with how different things load in the distance, we have the Insignificant Object Remover, which should improve your performance quite dramatically, even though you may not see too much of a difference, and that's exactly what this mod aims to do. If we have a look at some of the pictures here, 
You can see between the first two here, it removes just a couple of rocks that you may not notice otherwise. They're all circled in red, the first picture is before, the second is afterwards, and you can see a small improvement in FPS at top right. Obviously, for very high-end systems, this may not make too much of a difference, but the more that you can clean up the game, the more stable the game will be, especially in densely packed areas, underwater, which this mod removes quite a bit from, etc. It's not really going to change your gameplay experience, but it's going to improve the frame rate quite dramatically, and I'd recommend you install this mod. If this isn't for you, then of course you can skip over this. I personally will be installing it, so once again, Vortex and slow download. Now eventually, when the insignificant object remover gets installed, you'll see a pop-up with a couple of different options here. When we hover over each of these, it'll show you different levels of what the mod can do. So if we choose full, for example, it'll remove a bunch of different things, underwater plants, small rocks, asphalt chunks, brick rubble, and a couple of twigs. We can choose to not change underwater, not change rubble, or choose the light, in which case it only removes a couple of insignificant things. Depending on what you want your gameplay experience to be like, whether you're going for super optimized, max FPS, in which case you'll choose full, otherwise you can choose light and probably forget about it. I'll be choosing light as I don't want to remove too much from the game, but if performance is bad, we can always crank it up to full later. We'll finish here. Next up, the ultra quality God Rays performance fix. You may think that cranking down settings usually gives you better performance, and it does. Lowering the God Ray quality in Fallout 4 will give you better performance, but this mod aims to add more stability to the game by changing the way that vanilla God Rays are rendered, optimizes them, and gives you a bit more performance. Out the box, this should automatically change a couple of things, as you can see over here, and it should make rendering God Rays a bit cheaper while keeping them looking pretty much just as good. There's almost no downside to installing this, and of course you can actually crank up your God Ray settings in order to get a better quality gameplay experience. It's definitely a worthwhile install. The catch, as you can see over here, there may be a slight shimmering effect, which may not be for everyone. If you don't notice it, great. If you do, then you probably want to disable this mod after installing it. This mod, unlike some other ones, when we install it, there are two ways of activating this. We can either type bat god rays in the console when we first load our save, or we can add this command over here in the fallout4.ini file. So if we manually download this mod, we'll need to manually install this as well. So we'll open up a zip, and in here we have a simple text file. What do we do with this, and where do we put it? Well, simply open up Steam, search for Fallout 4, select it, right-click, manage, and choose Browse Local Files. Then in here, next to the main exe, we'll simply be dragging and dropping this godrays.txt file from inside of the zip, which contains these three different commands. Essentially, by running bat godrays, it opens up this text file and runs each of these different commands in-game. We can either manually execute each of these commands in-game, or use bat godrays rays to run all three of them automatically, or finally, we can add this over here to automatically run it whenever we start up and load into Fallout 4. So we'll be choosing the last one as it's automated. In order to get to this Fallout4.ini file, you'll need to open up your file browser, head across to Documents, followed by My Games, and then Fallout 4. In here you'll find Fallout4.ini. Open this file with any text editor, and we'll be searching for S starting to see if we have S starting console anywhere, which we don't. So under the general section, which is the first section over here, we'll look all the way down, and the second section begins here. So we'll add a new line just before it, and we'll type in exactly S starting, with a capital S for starting, console, capital C, command, capital C once again, equals bat space god raise. That's it. Save the file, close it, and we're done here. The next mod I'd recommend is Buff Out 4. This mod is essentially a buff out for the engine. It improves performance in many different places, especially when you have a lot of different mods loaded. This fixes engine bugs, for example, and even adds a crash logger to the game, which surprisingly isn't in there just yet, which should help you diagnose what mods are causing what crashes, etc. The crash logs are then saved in documents, my games, Fallout 4, F4SE. So, assuming your game has some issues, you can simply navigate across to this folder and learn exactly what's causing them. For us, we'll just click Vortex in the top right, and you'll see that there's a couple of different mods required for this one to work. F4SC we already have, so I'll open Address Library for F4SC plugins in a new tab, either shift-clicking, middle-clicking, or right-clicking and choosing Open a New Tab, as well as the XSE plugin preloader. We'll go ahead and install this one as I've opened up these other two tabs, so slow download. And now, the first requirement, Address Library, we'll click Vortex, followed by Slow Download, and finally the XSE plugin reloader, Vortex, and download here, then slow download. As you can see in the pop-up, we had a different requirement, which was the 
Visual C++ redistributable. If you've already installed this because of different areas and different games previously, you can skip over this. Otherwise, click this link and you'll be taken across to the C++ redistributable page where you can then scroll down and download the latest installers here, most likely the 64-bit version. Now we should be done installing Buffard form. Next up, an NVIDIA specific mod. This one adds NVIDIA reflex support to the game, which should greatly improve input latency, especially when you have lower frames. Obviously, you can't use this mod if you're using an AMD graphics card, for example, but if you have an NVIDIA one, I'd recommend you install this. Click Vortex in the top right. Once again, there's a couple of different downloads that we'll need. So the address library, which we already downloaded for the previous mod, and the high FPS physics fix, which we've also installed previously as one of the mods I recommend. With both of these already done, we'll download, slow download, and install this. Next up, just a general improvement for the game engine, the Scrap Heap Script Memory Limit Expander, which essentially lets the game have access to more of your RAM, meaning that it can load more things at once and be a bit more stable. Once again, it's super simple, just Vortex, and we've already got pretty much all three of these installed. Once again, C++ redistributable should also be done. Download and install this. Then next up for a huge boost in performance, I'd recommend the Shadow Boost Fallout 4, which sets the distance for shadows dynamically in game, meaning it should automatically adjust, keeping your FPS a bit more stable. You can see over here, it's got a reshade type interface where you can manually adjust things. Otherwise it should just all be set up by default. For now, I'll just Vortex. We've already got these, so I'll download and slow download. Then Vogue ENB, which is essentially a lighting or coloring overhaul. This is Vogue ENB and it's flashing to vanilla, which is weird. I suppose I'll pause it, but you can see it adds a bit more depth to the game and basically just improves how the game looks overall. This of course is a taste thing. There are a couple of different ENB mods that you can download. This one stays mostly vanilla and scrolling down adds depth of field, color sharpening, luma sharpening, SMAA and SSAO. This may technically lower your performance in some cases, but for the overall improvement in how the game looks, I definitely recommend thinking about this, if not installing it anyway. To do this, we'll need to manually download it as there's a couple of different steps. So download, and over here, we've got a couple of different mod suggestions or requirements. So we have Vivid Weathers and latest Fallout 4 ENB. So Vivid Weathers, we can vortex here, slow download and wait for this to complete. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, it seems that I'm not able to download the ENB mod as the website seems to be down. So from the manual section here, the latest Fallout 4 ENB should take us across to a page with a download, but for now it's just an information page with no downloads here unfortunately. I even got a pop-up about checking the Wayback Machine so I'm not able to download this here and show you how this works but of course in the future it should be working properly. Heading back you'll see scrolling down it says over here the latest Fallout 4 ENB. Once again it takes us to a page that just doesn't exist. It's telling me to check the Wayback Machine. Unfortunate but hopefully at the time of you watching this it should work properly. Essentially from that page you'll go ahead and download a zip file which will copy these two files from and it's the main game folder where Fallout 4 is. Download this mod and extract it, then configure in the local INI file, your own video memory settings, and there's a tutorial linked here. We can use Shift Enter when in game to open the ENB menu and customize it a bit further. If you find that you're getting flickering and things like that, you can check the posts page, which I'd recommend for pretty much all of these mods, as well as the bugs page, where you'll see it just suggests to disable the in-game SSAO first, which I'd recommend you do. Anyways, unfortunate I'll need to skip over this, but it did link us to the Vivid Weathers overhaul, which should improve how the game looks quite a bit. I think I'll have this linked separately down below as well. When the Vivid Weather mod installs over here, you'll be able to choose different things like alternative add-ons for disabling volumetric fog, extended rain sounds, Vivid Weather, and Quest and Player Home. I'll be choosing to enable Vivid Waters, Weathers Quests and Player Home, as well as extended extended rain sounds and volumetric fogs. We can choose to disable if for some reason you lose tons of FPS during storms, for example. Then at the bottom here, we have the compatibility patches. And if we choose to play either of these DLCs, we'll need to have both of them enabled as such. And we can choose seasons of vivid weather. So autumn, no season limitation, Silent Hill, spring, summer, and winter. For this, I'd probably just recommend choosing no season limitation to get all of them. Different seasons will happen at different times. And of course, this adds a different gameplay experience to the game. It's not necessarily going to change anything than visual changes. Changes. We can leave it as default or we can add bright colors to make the game a bit more moody. This one I would recommend choosing natural bright colors just to improve how the game looks in general. Finally, Vivid Weathers is 
is automatically enabled by default. We can finish and there we go. Vivid Weathers is now installed. Then just a personal preference thing. This does change how the game actually functions. The direct hit mod. This mod is fantastic for some players and awful for others. Essentially, in Fallout 4, if you're facing an armored enemy with weak points such as legs that don't have armor, a head, etc., interacting with them anywhere will do the same amount of damage as they have armor everywhere. However, with this direct hit mod, it essentially says that any unarmored areas are going to take more damage than areas that are armored. So, aiming for anything that's not covered will do tons of damage, and aiming straight for body armor, for example, will cause them to take a lot less damage. You can see where this mod may have its benefits and may have its costs. If this is something that sounds good to you, you'll find this linked down below, and you can choose to install it here. That's it. But if you're looking for a more vanilla Fallout 4 experience without this kind of mod, then of course you can skip over this. This is just a personal preference thing. From here, if you'd like extra performance out of your game, in the description down below, you'll find a link to the Fallout 4 performance mod category, and there's a ton of different mods in here. There's in fact eight pages of mods in which you can get pretty in depth with what exactly you want to control. For example, you can disable the basketball, which I assume appears in a few different places, but yeah, anyways, you can see just how granular this gets. You can of course sort by endorsements, for example, to find a couple of different things. We've got the load accelerator, which I wouldn't recommend downloading as we've got a different one installed already. FPS boost presets, which we've already installed one anyway, etc. But installing different mods from here that I haven't already covered may cause conflicts and things like that, but that's why we have the crash log mod installed. You should more than easily be able to find out what exactly is going wrong. Once again, from the buff art mod, documents, my games, Fallout 4, F4SE, you'll find crash logs here. And of course, on top of this, you can head back to the original mods page, where you can scroll through thousands of different mods for the game, including probably mostly skins, but that's all up to you. All right, now that we've gone ahead and installed all of our different mods, let's go ahead and fire up the game to see what kind of a difference it makes. I have the Fallout 4 modded shortcut on my desktop, so that's what I'll be starting it from, and we'll see just how this game performs. So we'll go ahead and continue. One of my saves is from just outside the vault, so we'll go ahead and see what kind of performance we get there. When we get in game, the 60 FPS lock should be lifted, and now we're sitting at a solid 132. This is quite a lot, 150, etc. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm not too sure what the weather would be here, but as we just came out of the vault, it is going to be quite a bit brighter than throughout normal gameplay. If we instead load from a different save, such as maybe the Commonwealth here, this is the performance that I'm getting in the Commonwealth area. We're sitting at a solid 144, which is really good. Shadows popped in there. They loaded in properly. I assume they were, again, dynamic, so they were adjusting, depending on what kind of performance we were getting. And yeah, performance actually seems pretty solid. It should obviously be smooth. It's a relatively old game that should be mostly well optimized, but it is Bethesda we're talking about anyway. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This should have improved your gameplay performance quite a bit. And if you chose to install the direct hit mod, it should improve how the gameplay feels in a lot of areas. And of course, the Vivid Weathers, for example, should change how the game feels throughout different seasons, which is actually really cool. And of course, general performance slash stability improvements from all of the other mods. If you think I missed anything, do let me know in the comments down below. Just do know that posting links will probably result in the comments being hidden, so just include names of what you think I should have included. And of course, if there's anything that really piques my interest, I'll probably link it in the description down below as well. So keep a lookout for the community section section if there is one. Anyways, that's really it for this super quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and enjoy your brand new optimized, more stable Fallout 4 experience. Ciao.